Okay everyone, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can have a player jump and land on some platforms. Um, so before you start, make sure you watch the video on how to make a player that can move left and right, and also watch the video about how you can make a player jump. If I press play, you see what you should have right now. I have a player. I can press, for me, the W key. It makes the player jump. I can move left and right by pressing the A and D keys, and of course I can jump. Jump. I can have a good time, and you know, I got this kind of going. What we want to add to this is we want to start adding some platforms that will detect if the player lands on it. And if the player does land on it, stop the player from falling. In other words, make the player actually land on the platform. So, let's go ahead and do this. Um, of course, to make this happen, we need to actually make a platform class. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, I'm going to come on over here make a new tab, make a new class. The name of this tab should match the name of the class, so let's name that platform. And let's go ahead and start making this. You, of course, make your new class by saying the word class. Type out platform, that's the name, some curly brackets, and now we can start making this guy. So for our platform, let's go ahead and make our variables here. Um, it needs an X, needs a Y. Uh, platforms are usually rectangular, so let's make a width and height as well. If you want, you can make a color variable. Um, now, right away, I can go ahead and tell you guys that, of course, what we want to do is collision detection between the platform and the player. So if we're doing collision detection, that means we have to make a hitbox, which means we need variables to store the top bound, bottom bound, left bound, and right bound of our platform. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make a variable for each of those. So let's do int left, int right, int top, int bottom. Cool, and I think that's it for the variables that we need. Again, you could add a color variable if you want to. I'm not going to bother today in this video. Um, so, we got our variables. Next thing we need is, of course, the constructor. Now, what does the constructor do? Well, the constructor is the function that tells processing how do you make an object or an individual of this class. And the job of the constructor is to initialize every variable. So, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to of course, every constructor needs to be named the same name as the class, so it's going to be called platform. And so, cool. Um, now we have to think about, for our platform, what might we customize every time we make a platform? Well, definitely position, because a platform, every platform is going to have a new position. We might also customize the width and height. Um, I think for me, I'm not going to customize these to be different every time. So that means I don't need parameters for width and height. You could do that if you want to. We did it for the player. Um, you do kind of what makes more sense for your situation. For today, I'm just going to have parameters for the X and Y because those are the only things I really care about being different. Um, cool. So I'm going to say cool. Let's make some new variables here. Um, since X and Y need parameters because they might be tweaked every time I make a platform, I'm going to have those parameters. I'm going to call them starting X and int starting y, and now I'm going to start initializing all the variables here. Um, so cool, I'm going to say x equals starting x, so it's initialized to be that. y is going to be starting y, it's initialized to that. For width and height, uh, I'm just going to make these a variable that I like. I can always change these numbers if I want to later down the line. I think for y, I'm going to make that equal to maybe 150. Sorry, not Y, width, make width 150, and let's make height something like 10, so kind of skinny. Um, we also, of course, need to define the hitbox variables. Um, they fully depend on these, so let's go ahead and do that as well. Um, I know I want to use direct mode center. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and, <laughs> I forgot that in the last video, so let's make sure we do that. I'm going to put rec mode center here. I also like to put that in the render, but I'll put that here just to be safe. Um, and let's go ahead and start defining our hitbox variables, or initialize them. So left, um, left, if you think about going left to right, what's changing there? Well, that is going to be the X, so it's going to depend on X. And again, I'm going to go to the, to the whiteboard really quick. If I kind of come over here, uh, we have our little platform, which is a rectangle. probably looks like this, with the X and Y being the center point. 
and the width being described by W, the height being described by H. If we're going to define the left side of this, well, from what we have, we're going to start with the X, of course. So left is going to be equal to X, because it's an X type of thing. We're moving left or right. If we go from X left to the left side of the thing, we're going to the left, so that means we are subtracting, and the amount we're subtracting is from here to here, but we know that this overall distance is width, so the distance from here to here is going to be W divided by 2. So that means left is going to be that. Um, while we're here in the whiteboard, let's go ahead and think about the other ones. Um, well, let's go, do, let's go ahead and do right next. Right. Or first of all, is right like an X or a Y type of thing? Well, if we're moving left or right, we're changing the X, so it's still an X. But if we're at the X and we're going right to the right side of the thing, well, that means we're adding because we're moving to the right. And the amount we're adding is going to be the same as with the left. It's width divided by 2. And, of course, we can kind of think about the same as top and bottom. Top and bottom. The only difference being here, of course, is that top and bottom are dealing with the Y instead of the X, because if you move up or down, that is changing the Y. Top is going to be Y. As you move up, that's subtract. So minus height divided by 2. Bottom's the same thing, but it's going to be Y plus height divided by 2. So let's go and start coding this. So we're going to come back in here. Left is going to be X minus with divided by 2. And let's go ahead and do the others. Right, top, bottom. Right will be plus. Top would be y minus height divided by 2. It's so different. I, should, I shouldn't have even copied and pasted. Bottom would be y plus height divided by 2. Cool. So those are some, some hitbox variables. Um, let's go ahead and make a render function while we're here. Um, this should be very straightforward. We're going to say void render. And the way you render something is, of course, just call the rect function. You can do a fill if you have a color. Something like that. And I think we're good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and do a test. So let's go ahead and make a platform. So in our setup and draw tab, let's make a new platform. So I'm going to say, cool, platform plat1. I declare that variable up here in my global space. Um, then here in my setup, I'm going to initialize that. So I'm going to say plat1 equals, and it should be, if I want to make a new one, I have to use my constructor function. So it's equal to new, then I call my constructor platform, and I just give it an x and y. Uh, I want this pretty low to the ground. I think for the x, I'll put width divided by 2. But for the y, I'll make that maybe 650. Sure, something like that. So there's my plat1. Then here in my draw, I just have to say plat1.render so I can see it drawn on the screen. Let's press play. Oh, there it is. Of course, if I jump, you know, there's, we have not done any code to detect collision or to make the player interact with it. So that's what we need to do next. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to do collision between the platform and the player. And so what that means is that we need to make a function for that collision either in the platform class or in the player class. It can be either or. Um, there's no magical answer about which place you put it as long as you put it in one of these. And of course the reason behind that is because if we, whoop, if we you know, have our platform, and we have a player that's supposed to land on that. The two things that are interacting is the player and the platform. So that means the function should be in one of these. It does not matter which, but it needs to be in one of these. For me, I think I'm going to put it in the platform class just because the player class is full of all of these kind of jumping functions here. So I'm going to put it in the platform class. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a function here that will detect collision. I'm going to call this uh, 
collide with player, maybe? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can call this whatever. Maybe since, for me, the platform is only going to collide with the player, it's not possible for it to collide with anything else. I'm just going to call it collide. You can call it whatever you want, though. Um, now, because we want this to detect collision between the platform and the player, and we know that it's in the platform class, so it, has, it already has access to all the platform variables because it's in the platform class, what we have to do is make sure this function can somehow access the variables from the player class. Well, the way we're going to do that is, of course, by having a parameter that is itself a player. So I'm going to have a parameter that is player, and I'm going to call the that's the type of the variable. You know, if we put, of course, int x, int is the type, x is the name of the variable. So we have to do the same thing here. The type of our parameter is player. The name of it, I'm going to call it a player. You make it some very generic name. Now what we have to do is we have to do collision detection, of course. So we need some if statements to compare the hitboxes of the platform and the player. And of course at this point I just realized we have not made a hitbox for the player. So what we need to do, if I go back to the player class, notice I do not have any hitbox variables yet. The good news is, is that because it's a square, which itself is just a type of rectangle, that means the equations for the hitbox for the player match the equations for that of the platform. So this is actually very easy. We can go back to the platform class, copy where we declare our hitbox variables, and let's just make hitbox variables for our player. They can be called the same thing because they're in different classes. Processing will not get confused. So this left, it thinks this left is the left bound of the player, not of the platform, because it was declared inside the player class. Now the way we'll initialize these will be the exact same way that we'll initialize them in the platform. So I'm going to copy those, go back to the player class, go to the constructor, initialize those with the exact same equations, and then we are good to go there. Now, let's do a test really quick. I'm going to go back to my, my setup and draw tab and let's print out the left of the platform. Notice when I, if I just say left, it gets confused. It's like, cool, the left of what? Well, for me, I want this to be the left of the platform. So if I say plat1.left, now it's okay. And I press play. It's giving me the number 525. And if I look at that, the width of my window is 1200. So half of that's 600. And so, hmm, so it's a little bit more to the left of that. I think that's because maybe it's not doing rect mode center. Let's make sure. If I do rect mode center, just to be safe. Oh, sorry, no, I'm thinking, I'm just being silly. That is the left, because we're doing to the left. The overall size of this, I think, was, look at the width, was 150. So 600 minus 75 should be the left. Well, 600 minus 75 is 525, so that is correct. As you can see, it's past midnight, so I, the math in my head is getting a bit rough. <laughs> um, okay, so cool, so that's working out. So that seems like the bounds are good for the platform. But notice, if I do p1.left, if I print that out and press play, Okay, right now, it's 575. Oh, but notice that if, as I move around, the left side of the player should be moving, but that's not changing what's being printed. So that is no good. Something is, something is definitely off here. If I press play, yeah, you see something is definitely off. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on is that the left side of the player was defined in the constructor of the player, but the constructor, that only is called at the very beginning of the program, when the player is first made. That means if the player moves after that, the hitbox has not been updated. So what I have to make sure is that whenever the player moves, these are also updated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bits of code, copy that, and inside my move function, I'm just going to put it at the bottom, 
put these bits of code so that whenever you move, you also update the bound of the player. In fact, I'll put a little comment here. Update the bounds of the player. So now if I press play and start moving around, you can see as I move, if I move left, the left bound decreases. And if I go all the way to the edge, close to zero, you see my left bound is close to zero. That's good. If I go all the way to the right, uh, my width, I think, was 1,200. Notice when my left bound gets really close to the, to the right, it gets really close to 1,200. So it looks like we have our hitbox made for our platform, but also for the player, which is good. Since the hitboxes are working, we can finish up that collision function we were making here in the platform class. So here we go. Um, here's our collision function here. It's in the platform class. The parameter is a player. So that means it has access to both the platform variables, but also the player variables. And now the if statements we write are just the same if statements you've done um, earlier in the semester whenever you did collision detection. So I'm going to say if um, the platforms, let's see, left bound, if left is less than the player's right bound, the way I'm going to do this if statement is I'm going to do kind of one thing on a line. So if left is less than right, uh, and if right of the platform is greater than the player's left bound, and if the top bound of the platform is less than the player's bottom bound, and if the bottom bound of the platform is greater than the player's top bound. I'll put this parentheses there too, just to make it look nice. If all of that's the case, we have our curly brackets. If all of that is the case, then what do we want to do? Well, for now, I'm just going to test this. So I'm just going to put a print line. So print line colliding. And then just to help me test this, I'm going to have an else, else, print line, not colliding. So press play. Oh, as you see, it's not working, of course. Um, the reason it's not working is because I never called my collide function. Silly, silly me. So because it's inside the platform class, the way I call this is I have to say plat one dot collide. But if that's all I put, you see it freaks out. It doesn't recognize collide here. And that's because the collide function expects a player as a parameter. So I have to make sure now I put my player inside the parameter. Well, the name of my player is P1. So P1. Now if I press play, not colliding, cool. If I start jumping, oh, I don't know if you noticed that. It said colliding when my player went through the platform. Let's do the same thing again. Oh, notice that whenever, let me make that a little bigger so it's easier to see. Whenever the player touches the platform, you get some colliding here. That's good. That's exactly what we want, so that's good. But of course, that's not all we want. We don't want to print something out. We want to actually make the player land on the platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my collide thing, and I'm going to delete uh, my else here, delete this print line. And so how do we make the player stop on the platform? Well, what you want to do is you want to make it where if the player is, of course, colliding with the platform, we stop the player from moving. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, say uh, a player dot is falling, make that false. So if you collide with a platform, stop falling. So put a little comment there, stop falling. We can also add a comment with our if statement. If player collides with a platform, do this. Cool, so press play. And first of all, I'm going to kind of jump to the side real quick. I'm going, to, I'm going to pretend I'm jumping onto the platform, so I'm going to jump straight to it. Oh, and you see that makes it where the player kind of stops and lands on the platform, of course. Now, you'll notice that I'm kind of going through the platform a little bit. That's probably not what you want, right? 
So what you want to do is you want to kind of do the same logic that we did earlier when we hit the ground. So if you have a platform and if the player is here and if you know you want it to look like this where the player lands perfectly on top of it, well that means we want to define the Y of the player to kind of match this position. And what we also know is we know that we have a variable called H here inside the platform class. We also have a different variable H inside the player class which represents this. So if you want this setup, that means you need to define the Y position of the player based off the Y position of the platform. So I call mine plat1. So if you're at the Y of the platform and you move up towards the Y of the player, well, what are you doing? Well, you're moving up. That's the same as subtracting. Well, how much are you subtracting? Well, you're actually subtracting in two steps. The first step is this distance. The second step is this distance. So what is this distance right here? Like what's the variable way of representing that? Well, that is going to be the height of the platform. So plat1 dot h divided by 2. That gets you from here to here. And then to go all the way up to the top, you have to subtract the height of the player divided by 2. So we want to make sure to define this inside our collision function if you ever collide with the player and the platform. So let's go ahead and do that. So stop falling, but also change the y of the player. The way you do that is a player dot y. And it's equal to, now we're already in the platform class, so I don't have to say plat1 dot y or anything like that. I'm already in the platform class. Since you're in the class, you can just put y, and it knows it means the y of the platform. So the, uh, the y of the player equals the y of the platform minus half the height of the platform, which would be just h divided by 2. And because we're in the platform class, h just means the h of the platform because we're already in the class. But then minus the height of the player, since we're not in the player class, we actually have to say a player dot h divided by 2. So now if I do that, if I press play, and then, whoop, whoop, I landed on platform. That's good. You'll see I can't fall off the platform. We'll do that here in a second. But if I, like, jump up onto the play platform as well, whoo, I land and, like, wow, here I am. I'm kind of nice and chilling. Okay, so at this point in time, there is one error, of course, the error being if you land on a platform and then walk off, well, that's no good. <laughs> um, you're, of course, you're falling, right? Or you should be falling, but you're not. Um, before you fix that, though, um, let's go ahead and set things up where we have more than one platform on the screen. Um, of course, what I need to do is I need to go back to my setup and draw, and I'm going to make a second platform. Plat two. Um, now that I have this, um, what I need to do is I need to, of course I could do this, in fact I will, um, I need to initialize my platform. So plat2 is equal to a new platform. I'm going to put, give it a different x, so I'm going to scoot it over by a little bit, by 200. But I'm also going to raise it up a little bit, maybe put it at like 450. Now, what I could do is I could just say, you know, plat2.render, plat2.collide, and then we can keep on going. Of course, what that's going to end up doing is becoming a lot of copying and pasting. You know, some levels might have 20 platforms, and so that means I have to copy and paste this 20 times. That's no good. Um, of course, the way you handle this is with an array list. So, what we need to do is make an array list of platforms. So, let's go ahead and do that up here. Um, the way you do that, of course, is you say the word array list, less than symbol, and then the type of thing that this array list will hold. Well, this is going to be an array list of platforms. So, we do this platform. Um, and I'm going to call this array list platform list, something like that. 
And then in my setup, I can initialize this. So I'm going to say uh, platform list equals a new array list. This is just how you initialize an array list. Look at the lecture for that if you forgot. Um, again, the type of thing it holds. Uh, and then we put empty parentheses here. That's because we're calling the constructor for the class array list. Now, after we initialize it, we can go ahead and put our platforms inside this. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to say platform list dot add plat1. And then I'm just going to copy that and say add plat2. So now down here, what I call my render and my collide function, instead of doing it for just one platform at a time, I can use that for loop, that enhanced for loop, to loop through my array list. So I'm going to have that. I'm going to say for loop to go through all platforms. And again, if you don't remember how to write this, look at the lecture for array list. But the way you do that is you're going to say for. And then we have to make a local variable local variable to this loop that represents the name of a single thing in this list. Since this is going to be a list of platforms, I'm going to name my local variable, I think, a platform. Um, so the type of thing that this variable is is, a, is platform. And the name I'm going to call this variable is going to be something like a platform. And then you say colon, which means in platform list, the name of your list. So the way you read this for loop so far is that for each platform named a platform in platform list, do some stuff. Well, what stuff do we want to do? Well, that, of course, is going to be all of our functions. So it's going to be a platform dot render and then a platform dot uh, collide. And if you remember, our collide function needs a player as the parameter. So make sure to put P1 P1 as the parameter there. So now this should render both our platforms and it should do collision with our platforms as well. So let's press play. Let's see. Hey, yep, cool. There's two platforms. Let's see if I can like jump between them. So I can jump. Oh, that's good. Let's see if I can jump. Oh, that's good. So you can see I can kind of jump between them and I can jump off as well. But of course, if I f do this, I don't fall. I only fall if I do it after a jump, which is not what you want. So now let's go ahead and fix this problem. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to come on in here. And what we need to do is check to see if we're colliding with all with any platform because here's what's happening would you land on a platform in fact I'll even show y'all if we print this out print line p1 dot is fog you see when we land on a platform is falling is false but if you walk off it does not know to make that true and so what you have to do is check to see, are you colliding with any platform on the screen? And if you're colliding with any of them, then yeah, cool, don't do anything. You should not be falling. Because right now, I'm colliding with this one, so I should not be falling. But if I walk off over here, I'm not colliding with any platform on the screen. So that should mean, yes, you should start falling. So what we need to do is we need to make a function that will check to see if the player is colliding with any of the platforms on the screen. And if you are, then cool, you're, you don't fall. But if you're not colliding with them, then begin falling. So this is probably the most complicated bit of this, but I'll kind of walk you through it. What we're going to do is we are going to make a new function. Um, I'm going to put it in the player class because what we're doing is we're comparing the player to every platform on the game. So we're actually going to make a function in the player class that takes in an array list of platforms as the parameter. So I'm going to make this new function. I'm going to have a little comment here to describe what this does. So this new function is going to check to see 
if the player is colliding with any platform. If the player is not colliding with any platforms, then make the player start falling. So that's what we have to do. So it's a bit complicated, but follow along with me. I'm going to call this something like uh, fall off platform or something like that, right? And so because I want to compare the player to every platform on the list, I need to have an array list actually be a parameter here. You probably have not seen this before, um, but the way you do this is you just say, cool, I'm going to say, my parameter is an array list, and what type of thing do I expect this array list to hold? Well, it's going to be holding platforms, so I put platform here. And then I just have a name for my parameter. So I'm going to call this maybe something like a platform list. Now, uh, I've come up with this with lots of trial and error. Um, I would not expect you guys to come up with this you know, from intuition. You might would also work through it like I did, um, but for, at this point, just kind of follow along with me, um, and I'll show you how to do this. What we want to do is we want to first make sure that the player is not currently jumping and make sure the player is not on the ground. That's because if we press play here, You only want to check to see if the player should fall if you do something like this. Well, if you do something like this, I'm not on the ground. I'm also not in the process of jumping. So what I want to do is first check to make sure I'm not doing either of those things. So I'm going to have a little comment here as well. Check that the player is not in the middle of a jump. And check that the player is not on the ground. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we say something like if is jumping is false. That checks to make sure you're not in the middle of a jump. Then we say and we're going to say if the y of the player is the, if it's not on the ground, so that means you're above the ground, so that be would be less than height minus height of the player divided by 2. So this equation, this is just like what we checked before. This is like if the y of the player is above, let's see, this position kind of over here. So I'll kind of redraw that if you want. Um, we have like the I'll do it up here. If you have the ground, well, if you're on the ground, you're going to look like this. Right? So that means the y of the player is going to be equal to, greater than or equal to, the height of the window. Minus half the height of the player. This is what this is true if you're on the ground. So if you're not on the ground, that's going to be if y is less than all this stuff. And so that's what this bit of code is checking. So this checks to make sure the player's not in the middle of the jump, and this makes sure that the player's not on the ground. Cool. Okay. So now what we have to do is see if the player is colliding with any platform. And so we're going to make a local variable that's a boolean. Um, I'm going to call this something like on platform. And we're going to start this off as false. And so what we're going to do is we're going to now check and loop through all the platforms. And if the player is colliding with any of them, make this true. So let's come on down here. The way we're going to do this is we have to loop through our platform list. So for platform a platform in a platform list, 
<clears throat> which is this list. We can now check to see if the player is colliding with them. So what we can actually do is we can say if and now what we have to do is our whole kind of if statement logic. So if the top of the player is less than the a platform dot bottom and and I'm actually going to copy this a little bit. Boop boop for our four things. And if the bottom of the player is greater than the top of the platform, and if the left side of the player is less than the right side of the platform, and if the right side of the player is greater than the left side of the platform. <laughs> so this is our collision detection if statement from earlier in the semester. If all of that is true, then that means we know we are colliding with the platform. So we can say on platform equals false. Sorry, equals true, equals true. So basically, if the player is colliding with a platform, Make on platform true. So that's what's going on here. Cool. Now what we can do is we can come on below this and we can now check if on platform is true. So if actually let's say if on platform is false. This means if you're not on a platform. So if you compare yourself to all the platforms, and after you do that, if on platform is false, what you can do is you now start falling down. And you do that by making is falling true. So if you are not on a platform, start falling. Now something I realize I just made a mistake here with some some brackets here. This if statement should be outside of the brackets for my for loop. So I'm going to actually take that and make sure you're outside the for loop, right outside of it. I'm going to put it here. So this bracket closes my for loop. Then I have my if statement checking to see if I'm on my platform. If I'm not, I begin falling. This one closes my if statement, this bracket closes um, this bigger if statement, and then this one closes my function. And this one closes my class. <laughs> so we have lots of, lots of messy brackets here. So hopefully this makes sense. I know this one's very complicated. Um, that's why I kind of walk you through it. Um, if you want to know more about it, feel free to talk to me about it, and I can break it down to you in person. Now let's give this a test though. So I'm going to go back to my setup and draw tab and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this function. So uh, I know it is a player function so I'm going to go up here with my player ones say p1 dot um, I call this fall off platform and if I do that it, it freaks out and the reason it freaks out is because my fall off platform function expects as a parameter an array list of platforms. That's what this means. So I'm going to come on in here and put in my uh, array of platforms. For me, I called it platform list. Oop, there we go. So I can move around if I jump. Oh, I got my little platform guy. Well, he's kind of freaking out. Oh, yeah, so I'm getting a little bit of an error here. Interesting. So I don't know if you see that. Let's kind of take a look at my my um, my thing here. I probably some little bracket thing. I want to make sure everything is okay. So if that is the case, or not not collide. Oh, in my player class. So if I'm not jumping, and if I'm not on the ground. 
Oh, you know what? I know what it is. This is a very slight issue. <laughs> wow. I think it's because if I press play again, when this is happening, the player is exactly touching the platform. It looks like this. You know, we coded it so that when you land on the platform, the player's exactly on it, just like this. But if you if you look at our collision function inside here, we are not checking to see if you're less than or equal to. We're only saying less than. What I need to do is make sure these are less than and greater than equal to's. That means if even if you're only barely touching each other, it will count as a collision. So let's see if that makes any difference. And it does. Look at that. No longer jittery. Oh, code. You always get these little slight things, of course. But now I have little platforms. I can jump. I can have a good time. And I can have as many platforms as I want. All I would have to do is come into my setup and draw tab, make new platforms, and just say where I want them, and then add them to my list, and everything else will work from there. So it's a full system that will get platforms to work. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, thank you so much for watching.